What's up, everybody? This is Pastor Colbert, the senior pastor, lead pastor of the Greater True Vine Church located in the heart of the Soto, Texas. I am thrilled and excited that you guys are tuned in with me tonight for Life in the Vine Bible Study. Like and share. And by the way, I know Christmas is this Sunday. Merry Christmas in advance to you and your family. I pray that you have a Merry Christmas. Listen, Jesus is the reason for the season. And yes, we will be open at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. on Christmas morning, just for one hour, because we're going to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and jump into this teaching on tonight. We've been in a teaching talking about walking in wisdom on Wednesdays and uh, because we're trying to prepare ourselves for 2023 and we want to go into 2023 walking in wisdom. And tonight we're going to land in Proverbs 18. Okay. Proverbs verse one said, he who separates himself, seek his own desires. He quarrels against all sound wisdom. Now, here's why I love Proverbs, because right off the jump, it leaps at you. Look at what he says next. A fool does not delight. Now, Solomon, no, he can call somebody a fool. He calls you a fool for this, a fool for that. I'm like, I must be a fool because everything that Solomon says, I got to get better at. He says a fool does not delight in understanding, but only revealing his own mind. I hope you're not connected to a person like that. If you're dating this person, break up with them quickly. <laughs> it's terrible when this person is your parents. It's, it's terrible when it's, this person is supposedly your best friend or someone you have a relationship with. But in terms of communication style, it's just terrible to deal with them because they do not delight in understanding but only in revealing their own mind. They want you to understand what they're feeling, but not really interested in knowing how you feel. So it's hard to talk to them. Sometimes you're married to them. You have children by them, but for years it's been hard to converse because they only want to be understood and not understand. Listen, uh, Stephen Covey wrote this book called The Seven Habits of highly effective people and what they have. A lot of business people have them. A lot of rich people have them. They have decency in their life, a decent marriage, a decent family life. And let me just tell you one of those habits that he wrote in his book. It was habit number five. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. That's hard for all of us that are honest because there's not a person that's watching me that does not want to be understood. I mean, you got stuff on your mind, especially from the person you're married to or something like that, trying to be understood. Have you, have you ever had something on your mind and you was trying to say it and you needed them to understand how you was feeling like I got stuff on my mind? And so all of us, if we're honest, and it's amazing to me how many principles or proverbs have been stolen by secular writers. In other words, Stephen Covey, he had to have read this part right here because so many of his principles and, and other great leadership books that I've read, you can find it right in the book of Proverbs. That's all this is saying. A fool wants to be understood. <laughs> OK, if you are married, this would change your marriage. Communication is very important because, OK, OK, have you ever been talking to your spouse and they said something that you didn't agree with? And while they were talking, you just blocked out the rest of what they were saying because all you were waiting on was a chance to just jump in there and get this stuff straight. Now, now what you just did was devalue the last four minutes of what they said because you didn't really address it at all. All you wanted them or wanted to, to tell them how you felt, which is how many couples close down on each other, especially men. Oh, yeah, especially men, because men don't open up. And if they do open up and fool around and let you into an intimate place that men don't let people in and you don't respond right, you might as well forget it. He done talking forever because he can't trust you with his heart because he shares something. And you went right. Well, I got issues, too. And, and we all got problems. He looked like, like, whoa, whoa, baby, I just told you. The deepest thing that I've never told anybody in the world. So when it comes to communication, and I don't want to turn this into a communication teaching, I'm just dealing with what Solomon said. He says a fool does not delight in understanding. I, I, I don't want to get into it now, but we'll deal with it later some other time. But the only way for me to know you heard me is to say back to what I said back to me what I said. As frustrating it may be because, you know, ghetto parents. Didn't do it. Mamas and fathers were missing. 
who among us heard a decent conversation between our parents that you respected? Yeah, you ought to even fuss in front of them and show them how to fuss. Our kids don't even know how to fuss. Yeah, you sometimes you got to disagree right in front of them. That's what Lady Corbin and I do. We, we, we disagree right in front of them. Now, not, nothing crazy now. And I know, I know, I know some of y'all saying, because I heard it testify to church. And it sounds cute. It's beautiful. Uh, I, when I grew up, I never heard my parents argue. Never heard them argue. Oh, that's, that's cute. That's beautiful. But, you know, I don't know how realistic that is. But, you know, Lady Corbin and I said, you know what? We're going to do it right in front of them because we want to teach them how to disagree our kids don't know how to we said no no don't 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 you y'all don't have to go to another room mom and daddy just having a little disagreement now y'all just stay right there let watch this now if you get heated step into the bedroom but we don't have to get all ghetto and cuss okay are y'all following me so solomon wants us to become better listeners to each other god gave you two ears and one mouth for a reason maybe in 2023 God wants you to do some more listening, <laughs> okay? Now, now, based on what I just said, look at Proverbs 18, okay? Underline it because it's, it's great wisdom. A fool do not delight in understanding, but only in revealing his own mind. As frustrating as it is, sometimes hold out on how you feel and ask yourself as I'm standing here, do I want this man that I love to feel understood by me or am I just going to be the average and tell him how I feel? Yeah, but, you know, there is a time for me to say how I feel, too, because I'm human. But, but try to ask yourself sometimes, does this person feel understood by me? And there will be people seeking you for miles around because you will be known as a great listener. OK, look at Proverbs 18, verse nine. Watch what it said. He also who is slack in his work is brother to him who destroys. NLT says a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. Did I tell you that proverb is replete with passages about slowfulness and laziness and good work ethic and poverty? Somebody please study behind me and I want you to tell me if there's any other subject comes up in Proverbs as much as laziness and poverty because of laziness, financial entanglement. Somebody just please study behind me and just shoot me an email and tell me if I was right. Because I think you'll see that for whatever reason, Solomon must have had a lazy cousin or somebody. Somebody was lazy in his family. He got issues with lazy people. It's like he's mad at somebody for being lazy. I'm serious. I'm, I'm joking with you, but, but see how much laziness come up when you study Proverbs. He says a lazy person is as bad as someone who destroys things. This is a trip. Solomon said you might as well be the type of person that just break people's stuff and smash their stuff, kill some people. And he says laziness is just as bad. Now let me digress and tell somebody that I'm not teaching workaholic right here. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because listen, you'll have plenty of money and no children. Yeah, they'll get grown and say, you know what, daddy, I don't remember you being there, mama. And you're like, wait a minute, baby, I'm, I'm, I've been working two jobs for you. But yeah, but I don't remember you. See, kids don't remember how much money you make. All they remember is when daddy took them down to the lake and went fishing. Yeah, may not have a lot of money, but y'all would have kept. OK, so I'm not telling you to work 18 hours every day. OK, I'm not telling you to work 24 hours. OK, but the point I'm making is you have to pick those moments in your life when it's go time. Woo! Somebody hollers, go time. Come on, type in the chat, it's go time. Can I suggest to about five of you that God want me to preach some laziness out of you? You been off your game a little in 2022. Man, you, you, you done lost a little of your tenacity. You've gotten a little ease in Zion. You don't even have the eye of the tiger anymore. You starting to sell for stuff that you never would have settled before. You had bigger vision than this. Come on, I've been telling you this for years, that even when you were small, when we played That's My Car, anybody remember? Who remember that? Give me some lights. Give me some hearts. You didn't have no driver license. You didn't have no insurance. You saw a Mercedes Benz road by. Oh, that's my car. I see a Carvette. That's my car. That's my car. And then when a hoopty comes, what do everybody do? Be quiet. Now, how do you go from that's my car and having all this vision and now selling for mediocrity? Now, 
there's more in you. Yeah, no, there's more in you. You ought to just type in the chat to your virtual neighbor and say, there's more in you. There's more in you. It's your harvest time. Come on. Come on. Shout if you want to. But it's your season. It's your time. Don't miss your moment just watching TV all day. The people on TV got some money. Y'all just missed that. Come on. You ought to tell somebody else, it's more in you. All right, let's go to verse 10. Verse 10 says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into it and is safe. Here's my question. What name? What name? Because Solomon said the name of the Lord. What is Lord there in the Hebrew? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. It can't be talking about Christ because Christ had not come yet. Solomon doesn't have a re revelation of the cross yet. He doesn't have revelation of the Savior. Now, the Holy Spirit could have spoken to him about it, but even in their prophetic wisdom, their prophetic wisdom, the eagle eye prophet despised and rejected a man, a man of sorrow, as much as Isaiah prophesied, he didn't have a full revelation of Jesus. He knew something was going on prophetically, okay? But he didn't know exactly Mary would have a little lamb and exactly how it would go down in Bethlehem. So here's the issue with Proverbs. The principles are timeless. But we do have an old covenant issue in what name Solomon is talking about. Because he says they run to it. Yeah, ran to the Lord. The name of the Lord is Jehovah Jireh, El Shaddai, the Lord, my banner. All these certain names they would call him because they did not have a revelation of sonship. So they call him by titles and names because he had not become, watch this, my father. Now, even though we're in Proverbs, okay, let's just proof text it. Let's go to Mark quickly, 4, verse 36. This is Jesus right here talking. And Jesus was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Abba, this is Christ at the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, just a few minutes from being tortured by the Romans, a few hours from crucifixion. He says to his father, please let this cup pass from me. And notice he does not call him Jehovah Java. He does not call him Jehovah Rapha. He said, Abba, yeah, Aramak, it means daddy. So he has a relationship with him. OK, I'm going someplace. Let's look at Romans 8, 15, 16. I got to go for you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again. But you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba, Father. Oh, this is so good, everybody. Let me give you one more Galatians 4 and 6. Because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. OK, that's enough proof text. That's enough right there. But let me give you. The principle. The principle is this. You have to see him as your daddy. You have to see God as your daddy. Now, that's easier said than done based on what you've been through with your real daddy on earth. Yeah, based on how many men played you and lied to you, based on your trust issues, your grief issues, based on what you went through with your parents, based on, on the balance of your house. See, I can't get parents to understand that how you raise your child will impact how they see God. Nobody believes me when I tell them that. <laughs> oh, that has nothing to do with them and God. Oh, yes, it does. It does. Because if my parents who raised me were not trustworthy and get me to trust a God who I can't see, then fear-based preaching by most pulpits that does not speak the grace of God has every day in church thinking that God is mad at you all the time. He died for you knowing that you're imperfect. My kids, catch this, when they get in trouble, when they were little and get in trouble, even maybe even now, but when they was little, when they was get in trouble or get scared um, or, you know, had a bad dream or thought they heard something in their room that scared them. Can I tell you, when they run in our room, they never run in our room saying, Pastor Charles Colbert, Superintendent Charles Colbert, Reverend Charles, the pastor of the Greater True Land Church, pastor. They never call me any of that when they call me. What do y'all think they call me? Mm -hmm. Now, would they be lying if they call me those other things? No. The issue is they don't call me by my title. They call me by our relationship. And can I suggest to some of you, yes, he's Jehovah Jireh, but he's your daddy. Yes, he's Jehovah Rapha, but he's your daddy. And you got to see him like that. Can I tell all of you something? And I'm stopping because I got to go. We got a, a Zoom baptism uh, class coming up after this. 
But you got to start talking to God in 2023. Start talking to God. Talk to him about your vulnerabilities, about your issue. He's your father. You may not believe it because you don't hear an audible voice, but God's listening. Tell him your worst fear. Tell him the issues with your children. Tell him your intimacy issues with your spouse. He loves you. Tell him, God, keep me through this. I need you. Keep me through. Father, keep me. You understand me better than anybody else. He wants to hear from you. Okay, let me close with this. Proverbs 18, 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, but humility goes before honor. I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. Pride first. Then the crash, but humility is the precursor to honor. I got to stop, but I got to tell you this. I got to stop. I got to go. Humility is precursor to honor. Pride first, then the crash. You know what? I like brothers that has PhDs and masters of business degrees, but I also like brothers that just got out the penitentiary yesterday. Yeah. And we got to have money, prosperity, no debt. We need to have money in the bank, thousands in the bank, hundreds of thousands. So I can do more than just hug that brother and say, welcome to Greater True Line. No, I need a plan for that brother. Woo. OK, let me make my point. Who do you don't like, Pastor? Who you don't like? You know, I'm telling you, I don't like arrogant people. Serve somebody. Serve somebody. Don't be arrogant. Serve somebody. I know I'm in the flesh right now, but don't, don't nobody know that when I, uh, I used to drive to Oklahoma, when I used to have to work in Oklahoma and drive to Oklahoma, go to church, pick up people, don't have a church van, use my car. First one at the church, the last one to leave the church. Come on, preach, serve two pastors, help clean the church, drove them. Drove my pastors everywhere, carried that bag. When it's cold outside, crank up that car to keep it warm. When it's hot outside, crank up that car to keep it cool. And God honored that. Humble is the way. Not trying to be somebody. All of you that are serving in ministry, don't let nobody talk you out of it. Because what you do in secret, God will reward you. I love you. I love you. Every minister I have, every uh, man and woman of God that's here at this church, the hospitality of the ushers, the, the youth leaders, the youth workers, please. That's that's where heroes are made. Yeah. Uh, uh, serve Lady Colbert. Yeah. Don't walk up to Lady Colbert. She she's not your girl. Yeah. Talking about, hey, girl, who you talking to? Show some honor. She's your first lady. There's something about serving that's better than anything else. I'm telling you, I've been serving all my life. Yeah. Humble, a humble spirit. I'm telling you, I don't care how much money you got. Stay humble. I don't care how many degrees you have. You hug everybody you meet. God loves humility. Okay, last thing I'm going to give you. Verse 16. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him great, great, bring, make, brings him before great men. Mm. Who heard that your gift will make room for you? It was hard. Okay. Uh, that's where they got it from. Okay. When you ever heard that saying, your room will make your gift will make room for you. That's where they got it from. But do you know what it means? Now I tell you what you think it means. You know, you think it means well. If you're knowing it, you ain't got to kiss nobody behind. If you can play uh, instruments, somebody have to let you play. If you can sing, you don't have to kiss up to nobody. Just be faithful in your gift, and they have to let you in. God will open a door. As true as that is, that's not what that means. And that is true, but that's not what that means in Proverbs. I love Proverbs. I love Proverbs. It means just what it says. That's why I love Proverbs. He said, your literal gift, as in money or something tangible, will make room for you. Let me, <laughs> let me give it to you again. Your gift will make room for you. Now, I'm not asking you to agree with that. I'm just telling you what it means. He said his gift will make room. I'm trying to tell you. And what I'm trying to tell you is this, that if you posture yourself financially, some doors might open for you that may have not opened. Now, whether you agree with it has nothing to do with what this text means. All right. I got to get out. Did you get something out of the teaching tonight? Ah, come on and clap your hands. Come on. Hallelujah. Uh, I pray that you got something out of the wisdom teaching all of this month. Um, we're getting ready to go. After this Bible study, I'm so excited because we're getting ready for our citywide baptism. But before we do that, I want you to get an offering in your hand. Come on, get an offering. I need you to seed in right now. I need you to seed right now because, uh, listen, this 
uh, New Year's Day, 2023, the first Sunday of the year. We have our citywide baptism. Hallelujah. And first, I want to thank you all. I'm serious from the bottom of my heart because of you, because you believe God, you believe the man of God, the voice of God. And you know that greater true line, that the man of God here means what he say and say what he means. Yeah, that we walk in integrity and that when we put the vision out there, the vision for many years have now come to pass. And it was because of you. I, I thank God first, but I thank God for you all because you didn't have to help us. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you that now we can fulfill that commandment that God had told us to do, go into every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And so the first Sunday in 2023 at this location is history. History is made. And I want to thank my team. My team has been working hard. Oh, my God. I just love them. They've been getting everything prepared for Sunday, for that day. And so, uh, and we're, like I said, getting ready to go on to our Zoom meeting in just in a few minutes. But I just want to let you know what was going on and thank you. So please tonight grab an offering. Listen, Proverbs 10, 22. We're still in Proverbs, eh? Proverbs 10, 22 says, the blessing of the Lord make ones rich and he add no drama, which means when God bless you, you ain't going to need no man. God says, I'm going to bless you with no drama. OK, so everybody get a seed right now, because I believe there's a financial harvest that's getting ready to hit this house that's going to flow in your house. And I don't want nobody to miss it. So come on, everybody out there, grab a seed. Come on. Come on, grab a seat. Come on, because we still got some things that we need to do to get ready for that citywide revival. Uh, I say revival, and I believe it is going to be a revival, but citywide baptism. Amen. A revival might break out. Uh, in fact, it already has broken out. I mean, every Sunday, this place, oh, my God, God has been in the building. Yes, he has. The spirit of the Lord. And uh, so, but listen, get a seat. Please, there's many ways to give. It's on the screen. All right, I got to go. I'm out of time. I'm certainly not out of message. And remember this, why settle for good when great is available? Y'all have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I love you. God bless you. Can't wait to see you. Be blessed.